Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivational Christians by Azon. Welcome back, welcome back. This is Bible Study Saturday. We have Brother G and Brother Jave with us. Today we're going to be diving into John chapter 9 up to verses 21. To begin with, start off with a prayer by me and the end of prayer will be by Brother Jave. Everybody by has to close their eyes so we can get right into today. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I really rejoice me, God. We thank you for each day that you give us life, that you give us back, God. And we pray that we're able to use our day good and use our day for you, God. We pray as now as we come together as brothers to discuss your word, that you'll point out the key information to us, God. We pray that we're able to bounce ideas off each other, help each other to understand your word, God, and have fun at at the same time, but still, so be serious about your word, God. We love you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's get right into it. <clears throat> John chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? That he was born blind? I don't, I don't even know. We should stop right there, bro. <laughs> Do you understand why they're asking that question? I remember I remember that um that verse, that scripture. I remember it. I don't know from I don't know exactly from it, but I remember that, that scripture. Uh, I'm gonna read like two or three more verses and then maybe that might help you while I'm asking the question. Okay. So verse two says, and disciples asked him saying, master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Why do you think they asked if someone sinned? In order for him to be born blind, like what? Like what's the what's the uh, correlation, or what? What's what's the what's the connection between the two? Let's take a guess. I mean, you don't have to know. I would say, I would say because we are born in sin and shape and inequity, but I don't think they probably would have knew about that then. So that's why I want to say, that's why I want to say that. So I don't know. You, no, nah, you write around, you write around like on the right path. You ever heard of something called generational curses? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll just get passed it down. Or like, yeah, uh, if we being biological, like scientists stuff. Your own um, genes. So just like my dad, six one, I got cousin seven two. I didn't come out four foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> I came out somewhere in between those two guys. So it's the same thing. So they, there's there. It's the same thing with sin, right? Just think of sin as a seed, right? If you show, um. If you sow seeds of sin in your past and you don't see God to break those generational curses off of yourself and those generations that come after you, there's a good chance that the same seed that's in you is going to get passed down to your offspring and so forth and so on. So that's why they're asking this question, like, did the man himself sin, which caused this type of issue with him or what there was just like something that's a generational thing that was passed down, like were their family cursed? Like, um, Jay, who who was it that Shem, Ham, and Japheth? You remember that story, Ezra? We went over that last mm -hmm. week. Um, that was Noah and his sons. Mm -hmm. And I want to say Ham saw Pops naked. Yeah. And then told his other brothers. The thing with his other brothers, instead of just poking in front of it, they, I think, was it a towel or like a robe they got? Oh, something that came a robe, and they backed into the, they backed into the tent and just gave it to their dad so he could cover up. Exactly. But then, the, but then what happened after that? 
curses, right? Like, so we're talking about generational curses. So right. what, what did Noah say to oh, him? Noah, he said he cursed him for some, some gender. I don't know how many generations, but it, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I don't know how many generations he said, but he said, I curse you for so-and-so generation. And I'm pretty sure he said something else after that. I don't remember. So he didn't curse Ham. Who did he curse? Ham's son. Oh, son. See? So I, knew, I knew Ham's name was in there somewhere. So that's something that you should even think about one day, like, while you just got your pen and paper out, just kind of figure out, like, what type of things that maybe your parents or your parents or that weren't godly, you know, um, and just kind of, like, ask yourself, do you see yourself in that same realm? Because those are things that you got to take to God and ask, you know, Forgive my family, forgive us, forgive me. You know, God help help me to even start the generational breaking of this, like like to break this generational curse. All right. By one man did sin enter the world. And by one man was everyone free from the power of sin that was in the world. It just gets passed down, brother. Mm-hmm. All right. Jay, you got anything to add? No. You good? You hear me? Yeah, say again. Oh, okay. Oh. I was saying that it's, it's two sided, so the other side of that. The first side is the generational curse, and then the second side is, is back in those times, the Jewish culture, it was a common belief that, that suffering or calamity was because of or the result of great sin. So that, that was a common belief that someone did something really bad while you're going through what you're going through. But there are times that people suffer and go through things just because God intends for them to suffer and go through things. And through whatever they're going through, God gets the glory, right? And he tests and builds their faith. So it's twofold, it's two sides. So general generational curse that you gotta go through this so that God can get through it. Keep that in mind. Like, yeah. oh, why me? Why am I going through this? Or why did he die so young? You know, like, look at um Chad Boswick, uh, Black Panther. I respect him even more for having the an illness. And visiting those who had the same illness to strengthen them. True. And that's how you give God a good name. Absolutely. That's how you glorify God. Through your suffering. Ooh. Through your suffering. <laughs> you look like you're ready to preach that. No, that just hit me in my stomach hard. <laughs> Son. It's crazy because people forget about the suffering aspect of Christianity. Like, God's going to bless you. God's going to give you this car. God's going to give you this money. He's going to give you this promotion on your job. God's going to give you the job that you want. God's going to give you this. He's going to give you that. And God is good. He's going to rain down. He's going to open up the gates of heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't even gather. Yeah. We we can't forget. God is also going to bring suffering. I mean, yeah, like it doesn't. It doesn't have to hit you, but if it does, or when it does, what posture do you take? Do you take that of, uh, what's my man's name, Job? Right, though he slay me, right, I will. I'm choosing to just worship him anyhow. Or you just gonna be out here tripping? like the Israelites in, in, in the wilderness. I just fed you quail. I just fed, I just gave you manna. I just, I just put on an oasis in the middle of the desert where you had water to drink and you still tripping. What's your posture? They were giving things. They were constantly provided by God, Jehovah Jireh. And they still complaining. And then you have Job on the other hand who had everything and it was everything was taken away from him and he was he decided to worship God anyhow. 
that's that's a level of spiritual maturity that we all need to be seeking, to, like like going after. Absolutely. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we will also reign with him. And I, not to go too far away from the story, but what what as Gio was saying, what's our posture when you pray for the suffering to go away and it don't? Hmm. When you pray for God to deliver you from the situation and he don't. And that's tough. It, it's so tough. And and I've learned that sometimes God doesn't deliver you from the situation, he delivers you in the situation. Hmm. So you you yeah. got to go, got to go through it because there's some there's always a reason. There's always a reason, right? There's always something that God is doing in your suffering, outside your suffering. There's, there's always a reason. So he doesn't necessarily take the suffering away, but he delivers you in the suffering. You've got to go through it. It's tough. It's tough to swallow because when, when there's a real suffering, right? No, I, I'll take the financial loss. I'll take, take the house, take the car. I don't do that, God, but I'm just saying but when it comes to now your health, that one's tough. That's tough. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we could make money. You get another car, you get another house. When it's your health, man, it's like, as a Christian, it's, it's tough. And I struggle with it sometimes. It's like, God, why, why, you know, why would you allow, you know, this person, this person to, and it's tough. But he, he gets the glory in every and any situation. He's still God. It got me the glory. Don't worry, Gio. That that hit me too. <laughs> you know, I have people come to me and tell me like, "This can't be God. Like God wouldn't want this for me. Like, like why would God have this? Like this this got to be the devil." I'm like, like God does not. Not to say that he like God's not like 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 a what do you call it? It's like a big fuzzy like teddy bear all the time. <laughs> Like you, you think you know your ways, the ways of God, but you don't. Like, if you just getting slammed with life, sit down, sit down, be still, and figure out why through God. Ask God what is happening. Praise Him anyhow. That that's that's what is called being an intentional Christian intentional about this life aka i'm about this life about this life about this life mine is made up i don't care what it takes are you about this christianity life let's dig in verse six um when he has spoken when he had thus spoken he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Jesus always spitting on somebody. Else. <laughs> There's another part of the story where he just spat on the person. I think I saw somebody say, "Make I want to make a shirt." Jesus spit on me. <laughs> it's like you gonna wear that around? You gonna like you do that? Because now you gonna have now you gonna have all the people like Jesus be spitting on people. Yeah. Man. <laughs> what? So. He, don't, don't, do, don't do that. Yeah. So he spat on the ground, right? And he says, he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is interpreted sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So when people... Get the oil, and they hit you with it on your forehead or on your hands or, you know, wherever they may place it on your body. That is sort of kind of symbolic of what Jesus did here. It's the anointing that they're putting, that they're impressing upon you and praying that whatever the issue is, that God will sort resolve it. See, that's what I like these Bible say, because I don't be learning these things in church. <laughs> I don't know, and then people just really want to come up to you with a whole bottle of oil, like they about to put you in the oven and pre. pre yeah, I, that's one. Th I never really understand what was a person. You don't know why, all right? All you do is, and then move along. Like what is? Like I never really understand what was the purpose of it. 
Like, mm-hmm. all you got to do is just pay for me. Like, and I really, I really did not like that old thing, especially when I was younger. I kind of, it kind of grew on me, but especially when I think I did not like that. Yeah. Like, I used to be, I used to, I used to have a disgusted face anytime they went around me and did that thing. I'd be like, God, please don't let them come next to me. Please don't let them come next to me. That's why we're here, bro. We teach them. But now I'm whatever. Now I'm just, it's whatever. I'm going to make sure I jot that down. Jay, you got something? I don't know your volume keep going in and out. But with the oil, bro, like you haven't experienced it until they, they like pour like a good amount on your head, dripping on your suit. So I have me wild tight. That's when my waves are spinning, spinning cool, bro. I ain't going to say you did it just in case they come across this video with Facebook. You ever had it where it like start dripping in your eye, bro? Like that's what happened to y'all? You can't focus no more. Yo. <laughs> nah, I lost it. Nah, nah I ain't cut the prayer, bro. I ain't focused no more. It's joint on my suit. I'm messing up my wig. I'm mad shiny. Bro, they put your, they put their hand and go against the grain. Oh, yo, I be tight. <laughs> Big day for me too, bro. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be trying to keep my composure anytime hey. or because I know I can spaz out easily. I really do not. I, like all they gotta do is just, just do a little. Like you, like you know what? This is not that conversation before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> Let's get back to it. All right. So, um, right. So he came back. Being able to see after he washed his face in the um in in the pool, right? Um, so the neighbors therefore, and we which before had seen him that he was blind, said, "Is not this he that sat and begged?" Some said, "This is he." Others said, "He is like him," but he said, "I am he." Therefore said they unto him, "How were thine eyes open?" He answered and said. A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Here we go again. Jesus doing stuff on a Sabbath day. He just really getting them tight, like, yo, where this dude at, man? You keep doing stuff on Saturday, day, going against the grain. Like, <laughs> if Jesus, if Jesus would want to do work on the Sabbath day, he could do work on the Sabbath day. He about that life. Leave that man alone. Jesus is the Sabbath day. Like, like, <laughs> Leave that man alone. He said it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and I and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Which commandment is that? Keeping not the Sabbath day. Was it five or six? It was one of you. I think it was five or six. Keep the Sabbath day holy. We, we did our own. Um, we got a competition coming up, Jay against South Ozone. And they gave us um, a couple different... Um, chapters in the Bible to to uh, to study. So I just made like some random questions in Kahoot. So last night we had to go over the Ten Commandments. Boy, pure jokes. These kids, bro. <laughs> like, we we something else. Comically. We something else. That's so All right. Um what do you say? Uh okay, so we were verse 16, right? Therefore mm-hmm. some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how could a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him saying, is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered him and said, We know not. We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. 
he is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. That's 21. He's just working his miracle. He, he, doing, what, he doing what Jesus do. They be doing work in the Sabbath day too. So like, I don't understand why they be so um, tight about it. I mean, I, I get it, but at the same time, you you know, work on the Sabbath day too. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not keeping the day holy as as you're supposed to be. So, yes, sir. What's your takeaways, brother? My takeaway is not nah, the, the anointing of the oil. That that that's really my takeaway. I'm so glad that I really understand why they do that. Gotcha. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Are you trying to say something? Hmm? You trying to say something? Oh, and I was saying, um, I was going to ask, who was it that was really blind? Was it the man? The Pharisee? Who was so, really blind? I got a good answer for this. The man was physically blind, but the Pharisee was spiritually blind. Oh, come with it, come with it, come with it. Come with it. <laughs> come on, preacher. Work the text now. <laughs> as soon as he said that, that came to my head. I was like, you know what, let's go. Let me say my team, let me say my team. <laughs> Get that big, big, big smile. Come on, preacher. So you said you said the or the the anointing thing is what really got you, right? Yeah. I don't know what that was, and now you found out. Okay. And then now you learned about the difference between spiritual blindness and physical blindness. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We'll see our takeaway. Um I wanted to look into why Jesus didn't just say go you're healed or eyes open what was what was the reason for him creating this clay and then like that alone didn't make the guy's sight come then he went to hell wash he had to go wash his face his eyes or face you know the clay off his face and just like why this process that's my that's what i'm i want to know i want to learn about I think the first part of it, um, during the New Testament time, New Testament era, uh, believe it or not, saliva was used for medical purposes. Right? So, I wish so somebody's saliva would be used. Don't ask me why. I'm not going to go to kindergarten. I will put this saliva on me. Man, you ain't washing your face. What's wrong? <laughs> my, what <laughs> I remember what my mom used to do. Um, why did they think that that was okay? You just go and lick your finger. You know? <laughs> just let me be crusty at that point. That's why you always got to walk around and use some Vaseline or some lotion on you. Um, that, that's the, the first part. At least What's part. interesting to me is that he used what we were made from to heal him. That was the interesting part to me. He used the mud. To, to heal the man. Mm -hmm. As why he sent him to the you know, that pool, I'm not sure. But the rest of me, I, I focus more on the suffering part. And we have to get to the point where we realize we can't follow Jesus for comfort and convenience, but strictly out of love and devotion. And so no matter what the suffering is, we got to go through it. It's part of, it's part of, it's part of the life. But God, in or out of suffering, he said that he will never leave nor forsake us. So in our suffering, he is with us. We may not feel him. We may not see him. But he is with us. That's just a, a reassurance for me, no matter what we go through, no matter how difficult it is, God is always with us. And if he doesn't take me out of the suffering, he will be with me in the suffering. You got me in my bag this morning, boy. My eyes. <laughs> just I was, nah, so I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at you. I'm like, wait. But I ain't want to say nothing. I'm like, yo, let's, let's just keep going. Yeah, keep like, look up, boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs>
He said, not following Jesus for the comfort and convenience, but with love and devotion, bro. Yeah. That's, that's the only way you realize, yo, I'm going through it, but yo, God, I still love you. I'm still rocking with you. I'm still holding on. I be trying to keep that that same attitude and deal with that so with the two situation that happened the one in um January and then the other one in um was it I think June I think that happened like in the middle of June. The weird thing is the first thing I said to myself after I left both situation was thanks to God. Like, cause I knew I knew like. Like, I didn't understand exactly why those situation happened. Still don't understand it. But I know there's a purpose behind it. I know eventually I'm going to understand why God let those situation happen. But the first thing I said to myself was, thank you, God. During, that, during both situations, I was like, God, put this in your hand. I know you got me. I wasn't going to worry. I, I knew nothing was going to happen to me because God got me. I made sure to give him that thing as soon as I, as soon as I was good. It's like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And I kept on going. I just pray, man, that the Holy Spirit really download this into us and that we don't forget about this whenever we're faced with a situation like this, man, because we get it now, bro, but then when we're in the thick of it, it's just like we forget. And I just yeah. pray, man, I, I pray you hear me right now that you just download exactly what you just gave us into our spirits so that we seek after loving you and being devoted to this life no matter what no matter what yeah. so see the other side of it too so we have to realize that we are we are a billboard for god right and that's that's how he gets the glory out of it right you see when you're driving on the highway um if it's raining you still see the billboard um, if the sun is up you still see the billboard right and so if, if your situation is good, you're a billboard for God. But if your situation is bad, the rain, and you still got to be a billboard for God. In other words, you still have to advertise God. You still got to let people see God in you. Yeah. So God not only necessarily uses the situation to help and build you, but to see what your posture will be. And Gio said this earlier, what will your posture be when you're suffering? Right? Can you still advertise me? And so sometimes when we look at the story of Paul and Silas when they were in the prison, they were going through it. Right? Uh, God didn't use that situation to save them. Right? It wasn't their praying and singing that saved them. They were already saved. Right? Not spiritually talking about. Uh, physically, yeah, they were locked up. But they were already saved. God used the situation to save the jail and then to save his household. And so what I'm saying is that when, when we're going through situations, it's not just for us, but God is perhaps using us to save somebody else. And, and that's the crazy thing with suffering because good people not, aren't, aren't always rewarded and bad people aren't always in debt. Right? But in all of it, God has to get the glory. So whatever you go through, whatever you're facing, remember you're a billboard for God. Can you still advertise it in the midst of what you're going through? The Holy Spirit was just flowing and speaking, so I had to share that tidbit. But I'm done. I say the rest for Sunday. I got to preach Sunday. Sorry. That's a I'm going to your church. With a box of tissues. <laughs> This is the first time we got Gio crying on camera. Uh, yo, cause it's like the part that's hitting me, bro, is just that I mean, it's necessary. I, I want to give God the glory, man, and and I know I can't do it out of my own strength. I, I need the help of the Holy Spirit to do so. So yeah. just like those days are short. Those days are hitting me right now, and it's just like it's tough. Like I said, I don't want to fall short. Like I don't want to get it wrong. I just want yeah. to get right because I just want to glorify God. Like, yeah. Whew. This, yeah, this, this Bible study was different. Call, do the benediction, man. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the church is over. <laughs>
you <laughs> this we're coming to we're coming to a closing. We're gonna get an end of prayer by Brother Jarve and then I'm gonna do my outro. Father, we bless you and yes. God, we thank you. Yes. We glorify and honor your holy name, Hallelujah. your matchless name, the name that is still above every other name. So God, we look to you this morning. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. We thank you so much, God, for blessing us with another day in which we can gather on Zoom and study your word. We thank you so much this morning for revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I thank you, God, that there is a hunger for your word. I thank you, God, that there is a hunger to get to know you. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you'll keep us, oh God, hungry, thirsty for more of you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll continue to have your way in and through us. Let us not just study this word here today, move on from it tomorrow but show us how we can apply it and go with it as we go through our struggle and our suffering <clears throat> you are indeed our still god yes. that you will never leave nor forsake us so god we thank you so much for being so good and so kind and i pray father in the name of jesus the same posture we have in the good times it will be the same posture we have when things aren't going so well Bless us and keep us even in the midst of what we're going through. So God, we look to you by faith because there is no one else to look to. We give you glory, God. We give you honor and we give you praise. I pray, God, that someone that will listen to this Bible study, God, that you will touch their heart, touch their mind. Let them know that you indeed are with them. Again, we thank you. Thank you, God, so much for Ezra. Thank you, O oh God, for continuing to use him. I am inspired, O oh God by his hunger to get to know you. And I pray, God, that many other youths will be as hungry and thirsty to know you, to know your work. So, God, we look to you by faith and we leave everything in your hands. I pray, God, that you will continue to have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man. man my fault, my fault, as I feel like praying, man. I feel like praying. You good, you good. I pray, man. You good. I'm going to be good. Now nah, we good. All right, guys, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for coming back. We'll be back next week. Next week, we're going to have a special guest. Javier, you know who the special guest is. Oh, boy coming through. He pulling up. He pulling up. Nice, um, nice. Next week, we're going to have him. So thank you. We keep on coming back each and every week. This is Motivation for Christians by Azran. I'm out. <laughs>